Blog Talk Radio. I would like, if I may, to take you on a strange journey. Once upon a time, there was a little girl. The accident was over a year ago. A second woman has been elected president. The twelfth planet has been named in the solar system. The last wild polar bear has died. I slept through it all. I was here for my waking. He called it a beginning. He said it was good. I think he may have thought that anything I did was good. Welcome to Transition Radio with your host, Mark Angelo Cummings. The show for trans folks by trans folks here to let your voice be heard. Hello and good evening and welcome to Transition Radio live from the cold land of enchantment, Silver City, New Mexico. My name is Mark Angelo Cummings and I am your host. Before I start the show, I want to take a moment to thank our sponsor, thebreastformstore.com. They have everything you can imagine to enhance your feminizing needs. Please visit the website and click on their link to check them out and tell them Transition Radio sent you. Also, while you're there, check out Katie Leon, one of our amazing authors. She advertises with us. She has several books to choose from. And uh, please uh, give her some of your support and check out her books. She's a powerhouse and she's constantly writing. And if you find it in your heart and feel that Transition Radio has helped you, if any of the particular interview has really touched you, you can donate. And uh, we also do a gifting for your donation. No too small amount. No small amount is too small. While you're there, I also have a GoFundMe of the month. And this month we have this amazing little boy. He was born with severe congenital hydrocephalus, Maddox which is his name, is um, missing almost two-thirds of the left side of his brain, has complete agenesis of the corpus callosum, cerebral palsy, and seizures. Due to the multiple doctor's appointment, his physical therapy, and his seizures, the husband, his wife is the one who wrote this, my husband is the only one able to work at the time. We are now going to MCV in hopes to get Maddox seizures under control please do visit the website. It's on the landing page and help Maddox parents reach their goal. Remember, if you have a GoFundMe account, then you can please send me that information to transitionradioshow at gmail.com. I have worked with kids such as Maddox, and um, it's really sad. Parents have to be very devoted. The therapy is very intense, and it does require a lot of money, and insurance doesn't always cover everything. So please show your support. Transgender pioneer... Stone Butch Blues, Arthur Leslie Feinberg has died. Very sad day. Leslie Feinberg, who identify as an anti-racist, white, working class, secular Jewish, transgender, lesbian, female, revolutionary, communist, died on November 15th. She succumbed to complications from multiple tick-borne co-infections, including Lyme disease, see if I can pronounce this, babe isiosis and protomyxoa rheumatica. After decades of the illness, he died at home in Syracuse, New York, with her partner and spouse of 22 years, Minnie Bruce Pratt, at her side. Her last words were, remember me as a revolutionary communist. Feinberg was the first theorist to advance a Marxist concept of transgender liberation, and her work impacted popular culture, academic research, and political organizing. May you rest in peace. Um, I was noticing that they switch back and forth with a pronoun sometimes, pronoun sometimes referring to her as a he or, or I guess, because pretty much genderqueer was uh, Leslie's uh, identification, so I guess that would be correct for them to go back and forth. I mean, I don't know how certain people feel about that, but I noticed that while I was reading it. Well, yesterday we had our first annual ever TDOR event here in Silver City, New Mexico. 
I want to extend a great thank you to Reverend Tyler Conley, an amazing Reverend, uh, he's uh, the leader of the UCC here in uh, Silver City, New Mexico. Very kind-hearted man. Um, want to thank uh, Joni K. Rose, who is the transgender female who wanted to have this event, and myself that we uh, we planned this event, working very hard for the past few months uh, to try to make this a success. And since it was the first. Um, we had three events, which I thought was a little too much, but Joey uh, wanted to have the three events. And I think if we would have had a better turnout if we just would have had one event where everybody would have gone and said we had different people scattered at different events. I videotaped two of the events, and they are on my YouTube channel. And that's Mark Angelouk. That's M-A-R-K-A-N-G-E-L-O-C. If you Google that, it'll take you to my YouTube channel, and I have it in four parts. So you could watch. It was uh, eventful speech and uh, music and refreshments, and it definitely um, was good for our first. I know it'll get bigger and better as the years progress, and we educate more and more people. Funny enough, we had uh, several parents asking me what it was to be transgender because they're kids, and we're talking about 15-year-olds coming up to them and telling them, "Mom, I think I'm transgender." So a lot of education to be done in the small town, and I'm looking forward to be part of that education process. Um, although, you know, here, let me continue. The list was so long. We had a very long list. And actually, today I got um, an email from the Transgender Day of Remembrance website with more names, which I guess because the event is usually held on November 20th, but we held ours on Sunday um, because there are other events that are taking place where we have an anti-bully day on the 20th where we're all going to be wearing rainbow color scarves to um, fight against the actual bullying that takes place. Uh, there's just, you know, so many, many, many on the list. And that's not even including individuals that actually die by their own hands. You know, um, there's many suicides that take place. And, and this is one of the things where education is most important, especially parents, because I believe that, you know, our parents are our biggest advocate. And so we need to get them on our side, because if not, you know, things really, really could be problematic. And suicide is not something that I feel a parent wants to see their kids faced with. I knew someone, his name was Eon, and even though the parents were kind of on board. The father, not so much. The mother, yes. Um, Eon hung himself, and he was only 16. So that really hit home because I knew Eon, and he looked up to me as a mentor, and I felt that I didn't do enough to help him. Talking about suicide, I uh, was given this information by one of the prior guests that I had on the show, uh, Trans Lifeline, which I am sure is going to be an amazing, amazing uh Lifeline for individuals that um, are requiring help. This is a nonprofit dedicated to uh, the well-being of transgender people. Uh, we, she quotes, we run a hotline staffed by transgender people for transgender people. Trans Lifeline volunteers are ready to respond to whatever support needs members may have in the community. And uh, this is free. It's a helpline run by volunteers and supported by the community. Uh, hours of operation is Mondays from 12 a.m. to 5 a.m., Tuesdays from 12 a.m. to 5 a.m., and 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Wednesdays, they run from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. and 10 p.m. to midnight. Thursdays, they run from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. to midnight. Sunday, who is the line for Sundays? Uh, I guess there's no date on Sundays because... When it says Sundays and it reads, who is the line for? This line is primarily for transgender people experiencing a crisis. This includes people who may be struggling with their gender identity and are not sure that they are transgender, which there's a lot of that going on. There's a lot of gender queer, gender questioning. While our goal is to prevent self-harm, we welcome the call of any transgender person in need. We will do our very best to connect them with services that can help them meet that need. If you are not sure whether you should call or not, then please call. It's always good to talk to someone when you're feeling a little bit down. Who will answer when I call? Well, our hotline is staffed by the true experts on transgender experience, transgender people themselves. 
Our volunteers are all trans, identified, and educating the range of difficulties transgender people experience. Our volunteers are dedicated to improving the lives of transgender people. Call whenever you need help. Greta Martella created this hotline to help us transgender individuals. It's powered by Pocket Hotline, a system that provides personalized hotlines for communities. So uh, the number is 877-565-8860. And I've actually got the link on my website on the link section. So if you didn't capture all this that I just rambled, just go to www.transitionradio.net, go to the link area, scroll down, and I have the direct link there where you can go and get that information, which is www.translifeline.org. Yeah, today's topic is trouble in transtopia. Well, actually, is trans regret and um, a lot of anger. And I found this article online, which I found to be very interesting. I know a lot of people don't like to talk about this, tran- this transitioning or detransitioning. They don't like to talk about regret because, it, according to many, it makes transgender people look bad. Well, look, we do have to focus on the good, the bad, and the ugly because it's part of life. Transitioning is not for everyone, and a lot of people detransition, and a lot of people go through heartache, and a lot of people think that once you transition, life is just going to be hunky-dory. Well, it's not, and I think that a lot of that anger and a lot of that remorse and people, even though after they do what they do, they don't want to admit this mistake that they made, so they get angry, and they battle one another, and they just want to tear each other up, and that's not good. Anyway, the article reads, everyone has regrets. Some of us have big regrets. Most everyone has some place to go to to get help dealing with those regrets. Except for, say, a guy who had a sex change surgery and now would like to have his penis back, the one God gave him. Our culture seems pretty much to each his own when it comes to elective bodily mutilation and the regret thereof. And there's a lot of regret out there. According to a British poll of a whopping 65% of those who've had various cosmetic surgeries regret it. People who regret their tattoos, plastic surgery, or more extreme body modifications, plastic surgeons make money both putting it in and taking it out. Hollywood stars can speak openly about misgiving over their boob jobs and whatnot. Regarding her lip enhancement surgery, Courtney Love said, I just want the mouth God gave me back. (laughs) But the difference between Love and the guy with phantom penis syndrome is that the guy isn't allowed to talk about his regret. Oh, no, no, no. Not openly, because the transgender lobby actively polices and suppresses discussion of sex change regret and claims it's rare, more than five, no more than 5%. However, if you do decide to detransition, to once again identify with the sex in your DNA, talking about it will get you targeted by trans activists. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So it's a challenge to understand the scope of regret for sex change surgery. It's out there, but <laughs> let's start with Alan Finch, a resident of Australia who decided when he was 19 to transition from male to female and in his 20s had genital surgery. But then at age 36, look at the years later, Finch told the Guardian newspaper in 2004, transsexualism was invented by psychiatrists. You fundamentally can't change sex. The surgery does not alter your genetics or does not alter you genetically. It's genital mutilation. My vagina was just the bag of my scrotum. It's like a pouch, like a kangaroo. What's scary is you still feel like you have a penis when you're sexually aroused. It's like phantom limb syndrome. It's all been a terrible misadventure. I've never been a woman, just Alan. The analogy I use about giving surgery to someone desperate to change sex is it's a bit like offering liposuction to an anorexic. Finch went out went on to sue the Australian Gender Identity Clinic at Melbourne Monash Medical Center for misdiagnosing. He also was involved in starting an outreach to other called genders menders. The reaction from the transgender community was fast, furious, and abusive. (laughs) Really? Uh, Particularly in the uh, 
Susan.org discussion from as described in Sheila Jeffrey's book, Gender Hurts. Since then, Finch Outreach website has been archived and there is no further information online. In fact, Finch subsequent silence is the norm for those who change their mind. This is perhaps not surprising given the vigor and vindictiveness <laughs> oh, this article is great, of the transgender community in persecuting those who have the temerity to suggest that all is not well in the in sexual la-la land. But if you look, you can find rogue headlines every now and then that even Hollywood spawning over all things trans can't quite control. There's much evidence that carefully crafted pictures of transgender authenticity and happiness are more fiction than fact. Yes, well, Renee Richards <laughs> is another one, and Mike Pern Perner, I think that's how you pronounce it, remains fairly well known as male to female transgender. The former from the 1970s and the latter recently both have stories of misgiving and sorrows that cannot be explained away through the old standards. It's society's fault, routinely prodded out by the transgender lobby. Tennis champion Renee Richards was one of the first to go through sex change surgery and was something of a sensation back in the 70s. As such, you might expect Richards to be a tower of strength, offering encouragement to those in similar circumstances today. Well, no such thing, or not so much. This is what Richards had to say in an expert from a March 1999 interview attributes to Tennis Magazine unavailable in full online. If there was a drug that I could have taken that would have reduced the pressure, I would have been better off staying that way than I was. A totally intact person. I know deep down that I'm a second class woman. I get a lot of inquiries from would be transsexuals, but I don't want anyone to hold me out as an example to follow. Today, there are better choices, including medication for dealing with the compulsion to cross-dress and the depression that comes from gender confusion. As far as being fulfilled as a woman, I'm not as fulfilled as I dreamed I would be. I get a lot of letters from people who are considering having this operation, and I discourage them all. Renee Richards. The Lays on Legacy, Tennis Magazine, March 1999. A 2007 New York Times interview with the Lady Regrets, describes Richard's temperament this way. As she wearies off the interview, her body language seems to become more traditionally male, suggesting an athlete who is wearing off the game. Penner's story is even more tragic. In April 2007, Penner, a Los Angeles Times sports writer for 24 years, announced in a stunning column that he would come back from vacation as Christine Daniels. He then wrote a blog, Woman in Progress, as he lived as a woman and served as a spokesperson for transgender activism. But then with no explanation, Penner decided in 2008 to detransition. He readopted his byline, Mike Penner, and lived again as a man. All blog posts and bylines by Christine Daniels were mysteriously scrubbed from the LA Time website. Penner discussed none of it, but according to one report, he was devastated over not being able to save his marriage. Then tragically, in November of 2009, Penner killed himself. The funeral for Penner was strictly private to keep out the media. The LGBT community had their own memorial service, but only for Christine Daniels, not Mike Penner. Another heart-wrenching story of a female-to-male transgender is that of Nancy Berhelst in Belgium. She was aghast after her surgery, saying she felt more like a monster than a man. She also spoke of her sad childhood in which her mother rejected her in favor of her brothers and isolated little Nancy in a room over the garage. Nancy was so distraught that she asked doctors to put her to death under Belgium's lax euthanasian laws. They coldly complied. Well, I know not everyone has regrets. I personally have none. I do, however, like to shine the light because I believe too many individuals are going about this the wrong way and not realizing that gender isn't everything. You can't put us all in a box. 
It may be the universe is speaking and it's trying to tell us something and we as transgender individuals are missing the boat. I spoke about this yesterday on the Transgender Day of Remembrance that I believe that we all have a male and a female side and what a beautiful thing that is. Everything in life has some form of duality. We have the yin and the yang. When we learn to combine these beautiful energies together, the power that we have and we feel inside is amazing. But many transgender people want to kill who they were in the past. They just want to hide it. They just want to just eradicate it altogether. And in the end, it comes and haunts you. These stories I just read, these individuals, 20, 30 years down the line, they're not happy. Why? Because you cannot change your gender. Ladies and gentlemen, I know I will be crucified for saying this. I'm used to being crucified anyway, and that is why a lot of the transgender individuals in the community don't like me, because I say it as it is. That's why the show is called Real Talk with Mark Angelo, Talk That Matters. In our community, we have this major victim mentality. And again, it all stems from regret. It all stems from confusion. It all stems from anger. It all stems from maybe this is what was not what I was supposed to do. And I feel like a woman, but I may not completely be a woman. And this battle that you have within is the battle that we see outside of us. In our community, and, the, and wait, let me see what I wrote here. In our community, the victim mentality in our community, and the everyone is out to get me saga is getting old. The attacks on each other is clearly showing the unhappiness many feel inside. I mean, it's evident. You go to any forum, any group, and you can get two transgender people to agree on one single thing. And I've been at this game since 2003. And I've been in groups, and I've, you know, just fights after fights after fights. And it's not little fights. The vindictive nature, and I just read to you what, you know, they just want to eradicate you. Literally, because you are not singing their tune, and how dare you sing it on a different note? There are so many confrontation, confrontational individuals, especially transgender females. And again, I'm not targeting you ladies, but I've seen this time and time again I, from all the forums that I've been on. And just it's, it's amazing the amount of rage, the amount of anger, and I know I get quite, oh, you think all transgender females are angry. It's not that I think all of them. I've got some tremendous transgender female friends that I love to death. I consider them my sisters, but there's a lot of anger, and we've got to look at this. We really can't just fluff this under the rug. There are those that are always complaining. It doesn't matter how happy they may be. They're always complaining, never happy. You know, I hate to see others who have accomplished and hate to see others who have accomplished things in life. Unlike them, the envy they show will destroy the morale in the community. Definitely destroy the morale in the community. You know, and I think it's crazy. I think it's wrong. I mean, and guys, you could call in at any time, 646-716-6895. I stopped mentioning that because I hardly get anybody calling in because a lot of people don't agree with what I say. And I think both sides need to be looked at. I mean, that is something that definitely needs to be looked at. Why are there so much turmoil? Why is there so much anger? You know, you look at, I've had, I've had it out with Fallon Fox when I used to be a member of the transgender role model. They kicked me out of the, the group because they wanted blood out of a stone from RuPaul because RuPaul was using the word tranny. And because I was trying to be the voice of reason, it's like, come on, come on, people, let's, let's, Let's not fight here. I mean, what does that do? What, why do we want to destroy people because they don't see us the way we want to be seen or because we're, they're not using the word that we want them to use? We need to learn to coexist as a community with this world. We're not the only individuals that suffered. We're not the only individuals that get murdered. There's, the world's a big world. Let's coexist. Let's stop wanting to hurt one another or wanting to just eradicate one another when we don't agree with what we have to say. Look at the attacks on uh, Kathy Brennan because she does not believe that trans women should be allowed in women's spaces or women that were born as women and not transitioned to such. But Angel has been crucified as well for saying certain things. I mean, if you don't say what you want them to hear, then you're the devil and they're just going to burn you at the stake. It's like a witch hunt. And that is just, like, not right at all. Not right at all. 
And, um, you know, we just, we have to mature and um, realize, and I think a lot of it is that, the lack of maturity, when other people have a different view, they, they, and and not all of them in the community, but they just want to eradicate you. And I know I keep saying this time and time again, but it's not right. Hey guys, please check out my interview this Thursday on Gay Life Television. I've got uh, Lou um, Ann Smoot, and she wrote a book. She was uh, she is a lesbian and lived thirty some years hiding who she was because she's a devoted Christian. Her father, a pastor, and if you check out the website on the front page, www.transitionradio.net. Click on her image, it takes you to her bio, and you'll get a little bit of history of who she is, and she'll be on the show this Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's going to be a great interview. I'm going to be focusing on so many different things coming up in the New Year, artists, people that are awakening, amazing people that are contributing to great things, not just you know, individuals that are of the LGBT community, because it's a big world, and I think that if we stop dividing one another and labeling one another with all sorts of labels, and we just realize, hey, we are spirits having a human experience, and we are in it together. We are all one, and that's my focus, to break down these barriers, to break down the victim mentality, to grow and learn. I'm not an evil person. I'm not trying to to ostracize anybody. I'm just trying to say it as it is. Just take a look at this, you know, take it or leave it. But let's just learn how to coexist. Well, I'm going to leave you guys with one of my original. This is an old one that I wrote when I lived there in Silver City back in 2008 on the Gila River, which is an amazing river. You guys have to definitely check out Silver City. Beautiful place. So many beautiful natural things to see. Best stargazing ever. Anyway, check me out this Thursday with uh, Lou Smoot. Lance Moot, and uh, thank you. Thank you for joining and listening. Love you guys, but remember to always love yourselves too. And here's a song as you flow. Through my eyes, I've seen the world. Through my heart, I feel your soul. Gentle, you are oh so bright. I feel safe with you tonight. In the river, there you were. Give me all that you want. As you flow so endlessly, bringing peace and love to all the stands before. And your world And your world And your world And your river As you flow In love In the river Peace and love to all.